Um, David Meltzer, welcome to the Ibble House and all things conversational. Thanks for joining us here. I really appreciate it. Uh, real quick as we, we dive in, tell people your website, a little bit about you, you know, all that fun stuff. I do a ton of stuff. I know. And the got... reason <laughs> is more important than what I do. Excellent. I'm on a mission to empower over a billion people to be happy and teach three things to a thousand people, to mm -hmm. teach to a thousand people, to teach to a thousand people. That's how I'm going to get to a billion. And what I teach is how to make a lot of money mm -hmm. to help a lot of people and be happy or have a lot of fun. These are the three things that I've learned through my journey, you know, whether it be as the head of Samsung's phone division or Lee Steinberg, sports entertainment CEO, Jerry Maguire, mm -hmm. or Warren Moon and I have a sports marketing company. But now all I do is provide content, books, coaching, TV shows, podcasts. I spend seven days a week creating content with people like you to teach them at the highest level how to clear the interference instead of, most people are trying to get happy, healthy, wealthy, and worthy. I am the exact opposite. I'm here to convince you you already are and teach you what to do to clear the interference between your happiness, health, wealth, and worthiness. Now I might jump ahead here and if I do, just pull me back. We're good. But uh, in that pursuit, in that vision, how do you recharge your batteries? Because at some point, someone's gonna have to then take that information and give it to those thousands. And that, that well is going to be depleted. So how do you recharge? First, I'm going to answer your first question that I forgot, which is most important because <laughs> I'm extremely accessible. <laughs> yes, you are. Email me directly, david at dmeltzer.com, or just Google me. You will find me. I promise, david at dmeltzer.com. So this idea of recharging the battery is exactly what I'm talking about. So I used to think that I would have to go get all these things in my life, that I would have to recharge because, of course, as we go get things, we're tired. Mm -hmm. My philosophy or paradigm shift is simply that I am connected to the omniscient, all-powerful, all-knowing source. I don't care what religion, spirituality, or emotional aspects that you have. I'm connected to something bigger than me that loves me more than my mom loves me or I love my children. And wow. this foundation... What, not religious based or spiritual sure. or philo philosophically it is a philosophy I gather but think about this I don't recharge my battery right I recover my body at the end of the night sleep is one of the most important things I have a sleep coach have had for 16 years a sleep coach yeah because I want to recover better than anyone and access information while I sleep 26 years of an average person's life is spent sleeping and one of the biggest frustrations that I have about human beings is the majority of people go to bed at night and wake up more tired than they went to bed. That's wild. And that's like you and I going out to eat here in Austin yeah. and two hours at a barbecue, you know, sorry, Sean Waltek, uh, <laughs> here, yeah. two hours and walking out going, dude, aren't you, aren't you starving? Yeah, yeah, me too. It doesn't make any sense. So when you realize what you're connected to and through and you shift your mindset to what am I doing to interfere with it? You know, feeding wise, nutrition, hydration, air wise, breathing wise, sleep wise, all the basic needs of the human embodiment. Mm -hmm. When you take it down to the level of I'm doing this stuff to interfere with us. And then the last component is the ego. Yeah. People drain themselves 80% of your time. Everybody in here's time is spent on things that bleed them, not feed them. Yeah. If you go to what feeds you, energy is no problem. Mo I, I watch Mick Jagger. Mm -hmm. And he was blessed to be at the Rolling Stones concert. I have an office at SoFi, a suite at SoFi, which is the big Super Bowl stadium, right? Oh, yeah. And I'm watching a 78-year-old man for literally two and a half hours exert more energy than, than even I've seen professional athletes running Lee Steinberg. And everyone's looking around and goes, how does he do it? I'm with Sugar Ray Leonard, by the way, who is also amazed by it. Yeah. And I said, because he's cleared the interference, right? He's just a vessel of energy. And we have enough energy, and you have enough energy to light up all of Manhattan. But we interfere with it because we have a need to be right and need to be offended. This fear that you have, yeah. right? Need to be separate and fear, superior, anxious, frustrated, angry, guilty. All of these ego-based consciousness, that's what's interfering with us in this most powerful being that loves us more than our mom. I love that. See, I, I often tell people, if you really want to be successful, you really want to go out there, first thing, wake up in the morning, look in the mirror and say, I love you out loud to yourself. That's number one. Number two, stop thinking about the change of like, oh, I've got to change this versus I'm so excited to try this. I want to go do this. Because then you're imparting that positive energy in a way 
that builds you up. So you're excited to get after it. You're, you're excited to go in. It's like, oh man, I got to work out this morning. But you don't have to work out. You want to. I don't have to have a meeting. I'm never sorry I'm late. I'm like, I, I, you know what, you guys? Something came up. I'm here now. I'm so glad to see you. Thank Let's you go. for your patience. Thank you for your patience. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. yeah. You and I speak the same language. And what I love about people who can articulate the same thing in a different manner is we reach more people in that way. One of the things that you're talking about is that get to, got to attitude, mm -hmm. which, you know, I've dealt with my entire life. I've spent 22 days in Korea when I was running Samsung. And all every day I did was call my wife and say how much I missed her and the kids. I got home. Almost the minute I got home after the kiss and the hug, she's like, can you pick up my youngest daughter? And I looked at her and I said, I have to go pick her up? And she's like, you have to? For 22 days, all you said is you want to see your children. I'm giving you an opportunity to spend 30 minutes with your 13-year-old daughter and you have to do it? She goes, you're full of shit, David Meltzer. You teach this stuff and you, right? I get to do God everything. God bless her, though. Fight, God right? bless her, She's right? amazing, I mean, yes. Yeah. And so what? what is she talking about? Let me explain. Yeah. This is... A statement that confuses everyone, I say, if you have infinite patience, if patience was infinity, mm -hmm. everything would happen instantaneously. And that. so I'm striving towards this infinite patience, which allows me to get to do everything. Now, the interval between cause that you're talking about, I get to do, and effect, I got to do, mm -hmm. the interval between cause and effect is time. So if we put our emotions, our attention and intention on the outcome, I got to get there. I got to get there. I got to get there compared to I should drive faster. Okay. When we want to drive faster, we get there faster. When we look at we got to get there, we get there slower. Yep. In actuality, the man-made construct of time is either working for or against us. When we're looking at the cause and putting what I call the enjoyment of the consistent, persistent pursuit of our potential, the pursuit of it, mm -hmm. we get there faster in man-made constructive time. If we're looking at, as my friend Chris Gardner, who did the movie, in your movie yeah. guy, right? Pursuit of happiness. Love I was it. telling him, why are you creating resistance to happiness, Chris, with your title? He goes, what do you mean? I go, pursuit of happiness? No. Happiness is the pursuit. Yes. Cause and effect. Outcomes should be pointed at, but all energy should be put into the cause. What am I going to do? How am I going to drive faster? What do you, you know, you just talk, talked about something that, uh, that really hits home with me is time. You can go to the store, buy some bread, it goes bad. You go buy more bread. You go buy that pesky avocado, you think it's ready, it's not, it's not. You touch it when you want it, it's rotten. You go buy another one, you just keep gambling. Time's the one thing, when you spend it, you don't get it back. How do you, with, with offering up so much of your time, how do you not hold judgment in giving that time away, knowing that it's something so precious, where someone may reach out to you and say, David, I really need your help. You're like, great, and you spend time, because we've emailed, you thoughtfully craft, you engage, you bring other people in, you have a lot of, and, and you do that, and then they don't respond, or they drop the ball, or they just ignore it. How do you not feel resentment on that, but instead just keep powering forward, knowing the next person that gets that email is going to change their life? Well, I, you know, 80% of people's time is also spent on things that bleed you. So the need to be offended mm -hmm. is one of the biggest bleeders in my life. And I've identified that. I like that, the that. need to be offended. And I wish I could feed the world as fast with the need to be fed that I do with the need to be offended. If you have a need to be offended, which I do, it's inherent in my energetic and genetic inheritance, the minute I walk out of here, I'll be offended. You can always find something <laughs> to be offended about, right? It's so cold. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. Well, they did this to me. So I have this realm of, number one, I try to utilize time with things that feed me. Okay. So if I identify something that's not feeding me like offense or the need to be right or anger or frustration or guilt, that's another one, I'm, yeah. doing, I'm Jewish, uh, it interferes with it. So I just simply stop, drop, and roll and stop, breathe. Don't, I don't resist it. I don't fight it. I just stop and, and say to myself, uh, what do I want today? Who can I help? Who can help me? How am I best to get it done with three lenses? Okay. If you look at everything, I call it the Meltzer Kaleidoscope. I'm still fighting my ego. I got to put my name on it. Productivity. Mm -hmm. How productive is this? How much value am I providing? How well am I serving that value? And how many do I serve it to? These are sure. the three components of potential profit and potential reach. Then after productivity comes accessibility. Mm -hmm. This is what you're talking about. It's a bifocal lens. How accessible am I to others, which is my main objective, and how am I accessing what I want? who I can help, who can help me, and how to get it done. How am I accessing that? So that's access. And then, of course, we talked about gratitude yeah. being the common denominator of happiness. I try to find the light and love and lessons in everybody, 
But the minute I find a closed mind, or I find a dead end, or I find negative energy, I stop, drop, and roll to something positive. So I have these down to a granule level. You've experienced it here today. I have a 520 rule. Five-minute phone calls. Mm -hmm. I'll give to anyone in the world. My cell phone, call me. Nobody does, even though I do this all the time. 858-688-3294. Set up a five-minute meeting. Don't text me. Call me and leave a message if I don't answer. I'll give anyone in the world five minutes. I know. Right? 20 minute meetings or interviews. Mm -hmm. Anybody in the world that call me, oh, Mr. Meltzer, can you, yeah, give, you know, 20 minute interview? I will find the time. But I want to say that, I, I'm going to interrupt you real quick because I want people to know this. So we have communicated in the past quite a bit. I'd reach out to you to come on my podcast. Mine is three hours long. You're like, Jay, let's do 20 minutes. And then I tell you, go, this is kind of my format. I'm sorry, but let's stay in touch, which we do. But the thing that I love is that. You, you, you respected my format. You're like, no, I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. You understand where I'm coming from. We'll bridge this water later. Let's just keep chatting. Right. And here we are doing a 20 yes. minute interview. Yep. And now I understand and I love you even more. <laughs> so I'm going to plan a trip to Austin and we're going to time it so I can do the three hour interview. I would love at that. A time when it's not interfering with being accessible. Absolutely. Because for me, I'm doing a value justification. Three hours with Jason means what? 180 minutes divided by 20, right? Is yeah. nine interviews. Yeah. is nine people that have their own audiences that I can help. So in my mathematical weird mind of helping people, I can help more people. But there's also windows of exception. You know, I'm not, people ask me all the time, I spend a minimum amount of time with my family every day, so I have these non-negotiables. Minimum of an hour a <laughs> day on health. Okay. I, I spend a minimum of two minutes a day with my teenage daughters. And some people get offended by this. And I'm like, dude, two minutes a day with a teenager is worth more than two hours on a Saturday, and they appreciate two minutes. I ask for five, by the way, my girls give me But it's focused, but it's focused. And that's where, you know, we, I have a daughter as well. One of the things that I've always done, and I do it in business similarly, I don't obviously speak the same way, but I told my daughter, I was like, hey, when you were born, you didn't get to choose me. <laughs> I'm a little crazy. How can I be a better? How can, I what that. can I do to be better? And every month, and sometimes she says stuff like, you make me eat my peas. Like, well, that's being a dad. Sorry. Right. She's like, dad, you raise your voice on the phone sometimes. Like, I get excited. She goes, yeah, but loud noises kind of bother me. I'm like, honey, when you're around, I'll keep my voice down. I'm so sorry. She's a sensitive kid. We're walking down the street. She grabs my hand, gives it a kiss, and she goes, Daddy, you've been really quiet on the phone around me this last month. And that was a 30-second conversation. So when people say two minutes, that two minutes can really impact so much because it's concentrated, it's real, it's identifiable, and it's their time. Right, and you have this conscious connectivity, mm -hmm. meaning that our brain, right, our cellular memory is day by day. Yep. And so if you're in constant contact, there's like these connection points that you're just, oh, this is episode number two. This is episode number three. Instead, you have to start back over. If you spend two hours on a Saturday in your Disneyland dad, mm -hmm. you have to start back over because they don't remember that connection. Yeah. And when you have the constant, consistent, persistent connection, you get exponential or aggregated or compound love, which is what I want with my children. Absolutely. When, um, when you started thinking about this, well, let's actually let's back up further. Who inspired you to be who you are that allowed you to, you know, the fuel to grow and, and to do this? So there's been several people along okay. the journey. My first is my mom, right? A single mom, raised six kids. Uh, all my siblings went to the Ivy Leagues, Harvard, Penn, Columbia, summa cum laude. But, you know, by her actions, my mom used to say, my kids will never listen to me, but they watch me. Wow. And I took that on. And she taught me an unconditional love by example, that I didn't understand until later on in my life. And then the second person to inspire me was my wife, um, and still does, by the way. My mom less inspires me now, today, mm -hmm. than my wife is my true inspiration. Okay. She keeps me in spirit, right? She's that person that just is that unconditional, constant love of my life. Then all the masters have inspired me. I read constantly, okay. and so Course in Miracles, Wayne Dyer, all of his stuff, Michael A. Singer, Power of, you know, Surrendering Experiment. And so I'm constantly learning. So I spend a minimum amount of time every day learning. I have a saying, and it's going to be my new brand. So you remember okay. the Dosakis guy, the world's yeah. most interesting man? Absolutely. So I want to brand myself the world's most interested man. 
You know, one time David Meltzer asked over a hundred open-ended questions just to see how he could be of service or value to others. The world's most interested man. Be more interested than interesting, my friends. That to me has changed my life. That because I have so many in spirit friends sure. by being more interested. So this you're inspiring to me. And I've created this system, this platform where I get to interact with people with you all day long. And I that's read awesome. and I audio book. And that's what's inspiring me uh, today. And there's been many people. That's, well, very kind of you to say. And uh, I would um, I would also, I'd, I'd like to ask you this, please. You know, in, in this world of inspiration, everything that you do, we both have a friend in the food industry. Uh, you, you know, you've taken quite a shine to him. What does what does sitting at the table in a meal mean for you? Sharing a meal because that's more than twenty minutes. Oh, that's yeah. an intimacy level that's different from the conversation. What does that mean to you? And, and well, and well, you know, we'll throw the sheet plug. Cali Media Barbecue. Thank you, Sean. All right, Sean. If you're in San Diego, get his grub. It's delicious. So we're we're having a bar. You're having Sean's best food. Who's there and why is that important to you? Yeah, it's very important to me. So, food nutrients is one of the four basic needs mm -hmm. of. Our human bodies absolutely food hydration air the way we breathe and sleep I have coaches for all of those by the way but when we share one of those things with someone mm -hmm. so if I sleep with my wife or you and I meditate to get together sure. or we share food and drink together these are at the basic of our needs and so there's a special energy uh, in that and so for me when I sit down with someone and eat with them it's not just a, cog uh, a conscious conversation that we're going to learn from each other. Mm -hmm. There's an energetic bond. Uh, there, there's truly a subconscious and unconscious clearing or connectivity that occurs. And that's how, you know, Sean was one of my first coaching clients that was outside of kind of my specialty. Yeah. Right. A speaker, whatever. He's the one that said, hey, I want the Dave Meltzer media package. And I was like, you do, you're a barbecue. You got one store yeah. in Spring Valley. Who, who's, and then he changed my whole perspective because I go, wait a second, this is about frequency. And he's such a good learner. Mm -hmm. And there is love in food. There's love in conversation. There's love in that connectivity. See, love is why you wear it on your hat. Exactly. Is that pure, it's, it's the truth. When I talk about consistent, persistent pursuit of my potential, my potential is to live in love, to live in truth. And sharing a meal is the fastest and easiest way to clear the interference between you and somebody else to share this inspiration that I have from a bigger source through me for you. People most of the time live in not enough. Mm -hmm. I was blessed to be a millionaire nine months out of law school and I called it the world of just enough, buying things I didn't need to impress people I didn't like. Yep. When you sit down for a meal, you sit in abundance. There's more than enough of everything. You're satisfying a basic need of the ego, the need to be fed, right? Yep flee, fight, or fornicate. And all of those situations with food, hydration, air, and sleep provide a different connectivity. And I want to give another shout out to Sean because he's changed me in my own coaching habits of understanding everybody has a frequency and he's blowing up. He's, he's an amazing person. Uh, what, you know, to put a bow on this, and please, I'd like your closing comments on this. And one of the reasons why uh, I love the Ibble platform and, and why you're here and, and talking there's a thing that Raymond, the CEO, says. He goes, Ibel has democratized, very simply, mentorship. Yeah. By giving access. He is, I mean, you're basic, you're a walking, living Ibel, right? You'll take the conversation, you'll take the Q&A anytime, you'll grab it, you'll throw something up and then someone will ask a question, you'll get to it, maybe not right that second, but you'll, you always respond, you're always very timely and very engaging. And so it's, it's interesting because for the, for the folks who are gonna get the app and check it out, just understand there's a physical label running around in there, and that's you, and you, have, you really have democratized mentorship. What, what can other CEOs and other people who have so much knowledge, what, what would you like to tell them as far as democratizing mentorship that, to make the world a better place? We'll close with that. And that's what I love about Ibel, by the way, is it fits into the Shakespearean revival that I'm trying to share with people. The first thing of mentorship, and Sean's a first example, yeah. right? To thine own self be true. It allows a barbecue in Spring Valley, California, not known like Austin or yeah. Kansas City, right? Or New Orleans, right? I'm talking weird place for barbecue. Oh, yeah. To be true to themselves if they democratize uh, mentorship by four things. You need to capture what you're doing. 
You need to modify it for the different, this is what it will provides, right? Dave Meltzer is only so good when I can talk one-on-one -on -one with Jace, but when we capture my essence here today, yep. modify it for all these different platforms. So you know, you're on LinkedIn, this will be seen on Instagram, LinkedIn, every single platform, it'll be reshared and repurposed and modified. Then it's amplified by the audience because whoever it resonates with, which will be minimum 10%, mm -hmm. it'll resonate, 10% will hate it, and then we'll start working on the 80% in the middle. It then amplifies to the world, democratizing mentorship, free information, the dummy tax is shared for free, and then guess what? The best part for me is the perpetual nature of content that's yeah. created that somebody will hear about it and go back even though they weren't here with us. I love it. David, I can't thank you enough for the time. You're, you're a busy man. Active. Just, we, we busy went, means unavailable. That's right. Active. active. I'm very active. You're, you're an active man. I love it. I love your energy. What a great way to start the morning. And uh, as someone heard a little beep, that's the alarm. We're at, we're at hair over 20, 20 minutes. minutes. <laughs> Brother, I appreciate you so much. Thank you. We're going to do more. Yes, more than will. 20 minutes. Thank you, everybody. Peace.